Hey guys, this is Pharaoh 2091 and welcome back to Let's Play Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Last time we left off, we kind of have to uh, buy some time regarding this case because, well, Waki was about to be declared guilty. We just can't let that happen because, well, if that happens, then Apollo is pretty much screwed. So, with that time, we kind of figured, wait a minute, it's like Apollo kind of has like a some type of power, I would assume, like, like we're trying to uh, per perceive something, you know, but, well, we just kind of figured out that anytime there's a contradiction or something where he's lying, uh, he's kind of like messing with the corner of the book a little bit there, and it seems like he's doing it now, so what we're going to do is go ahead and press on this statement again, and, uh, let's see, I, mean, I think this might be new. So you called immediately after witnessing the murder? The police undoubtedly have a record of the call. Why not check with them? Wait, Apollo! This has to be it! Wait, you mean his habit? No, we know this. Yeah, we know, we know. I hate these damn flashbacks. The only time he even had the book open was here. Which means this is the place to look for his habit. I... Don't know how I know, but I know. You know what? It's my bracelet. It's, it's different somehow. I can feel it reacting to something about the witness. Your bracelet? I'm not sure. I I'm not sure I get to focus stuff. You were. I'm not sure if I get the focus stuff you were talking about, Trucy. But I have a feeling that trusting my bracelet is the way to go. Okay. I just need to touch my bracelet as it reacts to the testimony. So, yeah. This is be a little weird here. What's going on? I can see the witness's face. His expression so clearly. It's filling my mind! Oh my god! Get me off these drugs! I can see, see nothing else. Hear nothing else. Apollo? Trucy! What's happening to me? I think I'm dying! This is what I meant by focusing. <coughs> focusing? In this state, you can see everything, Apollo. Everything the witness does. That's great, but this is kind of freaking me out! Just look for Mr. Stickler's twitch. His habit. Remember it, right? Sure. When he says something he's not sure of, he, he fiddles with a page of his book. You got it! Right now, you're looking at the witness's face. And your eyes are sort of bugging out. I'll bet they are. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine how Paul looks right now. He must be like, like, whoa, dude. You know, and the judge is like, what the hell? How the hell this guy passed his bar exam? <laughs> First, move your focus attention down to Mr. Stickler's hand. His hand? You know what to look for now, but you have to be looking at the right place. She's right. I can only see his face like this. Time to try changing my viewpoint. So, see, now you can move around, and, like, his eyes are really bugging out. So let's move to his hand, and his... So there it is. Perfect! Now you're really ready. Ready? Ready for what? Ready to perceive the truth behind the twitch. Perceive? Try listening to witness, witness talk as you focus. Then watch for his habit. Right. You mean when he fiddles the page? That's right. That's your signal to look closer, to perceive. <coughs> Find his weak spot, and guarantee I guarantee we'll be able to give him the royal flush. Spoken like a true poker head's daughter. I'm a ma magician, thank you very much. So I have to pay attention to his words. And his fingers. Don't worry, if you miss it, you can always try again. Right. Look out, nervous twitch. Here comes justice. Okay, so now it goes very slowly. Now see, look at this. See, see how it's fiddling around? You want to click Perceive right there. And see, we're perceiving on the statement, I use my cell phone. Get that? So confirm on that. Gotcha! Let's see, that's a new thing there, see? Gotcha! So, there we go. I... I saw it! Just now, I, I could see it! M Mr. Justice, do you have something to say? All this banging of desks is quite bad for my circulation, you know. Mr. Stickler, allow me to ask you a simple question. Why did you fiddle the page of your book just now? 
The very moment you mention your cell phone? <coughs> what were you talking about? I'm curious about how about your about the cell phone of yours. Mind if I ask a few questions about it? Hmm. What to ask? What to ask? Well, I think first thing first is um, I want to see his phone. How about that, Mr. Sickler? Please show me your cell phone. Done. Why? Whatever for? Show me and you'll find out. W well, I can't. I don't have it. You see? You don't have it. Mr. Stickler, is this your cell phone? Oh, 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 wait a minute. I think I might know where this is going. Yo! Where did you get that? That's the phone from yesterday. Yeah. Well, where we, uh, found the car that's supposedly at Phoenix and the thing about the panties. Huh. How strange, Mr. Stickler. Can you explain why your cell phone is sitting here in my hand this very moment? Wait a minute. What is this meaning? What is the meaning of all this? This cell phone was found yesterday in the Miractus Clinic garage. The Miractus? Why, that's where the victim lived! Yes! Yeah, that's impossible! He's really flipping through those pages. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court, didn't you? If your cell phone is here, how could you have called the police? Well, you. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I explained now. <laughs> it's true. I didn't have my cell phone that night. That is why it can be said that I called police for a public payphone. A payphone? So you didn't call on your cell phone after all. Just where was this payphone located, Mr. Stickler? Well, to indicate it with a string of a high degree of accuracy, it was right around here. That's quite a ways from the park. But why did you lie? There could only be one reason. He didn't want the court to know he had lost his cell phone because it was found in the victim's garage. What are you saying? Mr. Stickler, you broke into Miractus Clinic garage and denied the murder. This cell phone tells all. And there goes our corner thing. But that's ridiculous! That makes it sound like. Look, I snuck into the fellow's garage to commit some crime! And so I were trying to kill him! Well, Dr. Maractus was killed that night. Well, yes, but no! This line of reasoning has to be against the rules! <coughs> yes, it's true. I lost my cell phone. But you can't prove that I lost it that night! Hmm. Well, Mr. Justice, if that cell phone was dropped the night of the murder, it does raise considerable suspicions as to the connection of the crime. Now's your chance, Apollo. Connect Mr. Stickler to the crime. Oh, he's already connected enough. I just have to prove it. Well, do I have a piece of evidence I can do the job? Can I prove the cell phone was dropped in the night of the murder? Uh... I think I can. I think I can. Of course I have evidence! Oh, I like your swagger, Air Forehead. Hit it! Never. Ever. Ever. Use that word again. I hate the word swag, or swagger, or any type of hippie... I don't know if it's hippie or hipster BS type of... I hate it! I don't know. I mean, not, not nothing against hipsters or hippie or anything like that, but I, I, not, I don't even think it even relates to them at all. I just don't like that word, because every damn teenager uses it nowadays, and it's like, Ugh! That and YOLO! If I ever catch you, any one of you guys saying that, oh my god. I will just go insane. The court will see this evidence. Mr. Justice hit it, as they say. And, oops. There we go, I lost control of my emulator right there. The evidence that proves that cell, cell phone was dropped at night of murder is... And the only thing I can think of is... Well... I think it might be, uh, this, the mirror. That's a side view of mirror. As it so happens, Dr. Marx's car was in an accident that took place the night of the murder. An accident? An accident. It happened a little after 9 p.m. just outside People Park, our murder scene. Dr. Marek's car hit a pedestrian. What are you trying to say? From the absence of a mirror, it's clear that the car was parked after the accident. 
which means it was parked there after 9 p.m. on the night of the murder. If your cell phone had been dropped before a car was parked in that garage, then it would have been crushed. Very true. After all, it was lying in the ground right under the wheel. Ugh. Ergo, Mr. Stickler, the only time you could have dropped this in, the, is in that garage was after 9 p.m. the night of the murder in the park. Ugh. Oh god, we're really getting this guy now. Mr. Stickler, you know what this means? You did break into the victim's garage that night. This is most unexpected. Mr. Justice, are you naming the witness as a suspect in the murder of Pal Maractus? No, stop! This is too much! This can't be happening! Prosecutor, say something! I suppose it is worth saying this. No connection has been found between Wesley Stickler and Pal Maractus. That is other than this. I believe our next testimony will be most revel 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 revelatory. Is the witness, is pre is the witness prepared? Y yes, Your Honor! I know that face. That's the face of guilt. Alrighty. Let's see what he has to say about this. Stickler's truth. And that night? Yes, I went to the supermarket. I must have dropped my cell phone on my way back. And when I was walking through the park, I had to witness a crime. I saw the killer, the victim, the stand, all as clear as day. It was him I saw the defendant at the scene. Yes, but your cell phone was lying in a garage. Ah, uh, yes, well, as you can see, my model cell phone has a defect. It is given, it is given to rolling. It's quite a pain that when, when I drop it alongside a road, you know. It looks like a normal cell phone to me. In any case, Mr. Justice, of cross-examination, would you please? That's funny. My principal didn't react at all during that testimony. His nervous habit must not be acting up. I didn't sense anything either, actually. Looks like you're on your own this time around. Right. No problem. I hope. Here comes Justice, once again. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think we might need some more information here. He says that he saw everything. He said he saw the killer, the victim, the stand, everything. Wait a minute now. This part of the testimony is the key. I know it. Should I press him about the killer, the victim, or the noodle stand? Now, you might be, like, thinking, you know, wait a minute, well, it's obviously probably the victim or the killer. But, no. Actually, just out of curiosity, I kind of want to let him talk about the noodle stand, just for the hell of it. Do you happen to remember the noodle stand? Quite well, yes! For a student of the science, his keen observation and healthy apps of curiosity are vital! I remember everything! I can even read the sign! I believe it said, um... Uh, Noodle! Yes, that was it! For remembering something quite well, it sure took you a while to tell us. But thank you for telling us that a noodle stand sells noodles. Very enlightening. Well, Mr. Justice? Hmm, what about that sign? Could it be important? Now you might be thinking, well, yeah, but how the hell is that important at all? In all actuality, it is very important. So the sign in the noodle stand said, Noodle. It appears the defense has just obtained a vital piece of evidence. Is this noodle stand's broth really that delicious? I'll have to go sample the wares of these wares one of these days. Hmm. I think it's worth adding to the testimony as well. Hmm. <laughs> Whatever sort of noodles that stand, that stand sells, it can't match up to Ivy used cafeteria. Some apply to the school merely for a taste of our smart noodles. That's kind of stupid. I wouldn't mind a taste of that myself. So, it says, why well, I even remember the sign that said noodle. Now, you're like, wait a minute, how the hell is that important? Well, let's think about something here. Let's uh, go to the noodle stand and look, look at it real quick. Now, the, here is how, um, here's how the stand will look like if you're facing at it the way that Mr. Stickler, Stickler was looking at it. If you take a quick look at it, you'll notice that it doesn't say Noodle, it says Eldune. However, if you flip it to this side, it'll say, it'll say Noodle. So if he's quite sure that it says Noodle, 
then that might mean that he wasn't looking at the proper side, which means that his entire testimony could just go down and drain just like that. Objection! This video might go on for a little while, guys, just to let you know. Just saying, because uh, I'm not sure what would be a good place to stop, and I feel like I'm getting kind of close to the ending point of this trial, so I'm just going to keep going on. And you're absolutely sure the sign said ready noodle. Why, just last week my professor offered me this praise. At least you have a good eyesight, Stickler. I'll give you that. That's your praise? It sounds like a professor doesn't even like you, and it sounds like you're not even that smart. It read without a doubt, noodle. I see. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is that pity I see in your eyes? Let's take a look at our map, shall we? <coughs> so, you're claiming that you saw the sign you were standing here. Right? Here, was it? Although, it wouldn't have been, wouldn't it have been a bit hard to read a sign from that spot. You think so? Mr. Stickler, I like to please take a, another look at the stand and to carefully read what the sign says. I see. Clearly says Eldune. See, the sign actually states the name of the stand's owner, Eldunes. El El du Inconceivable! I'm certain it was definitely Noodle for sure. Positive. I'm afraid your professor was wrong about that eyesight. I wouldn't be so quick to jump to that conclusion either. The sign he saw changes everything. The witness says the sign said Noodle, but did he see it wrong? But did he, did he see it right? In actuality, he saw it right. What would you say if I told you that there is one spot from which a sign would be read that way Mr. Stickler claims? Oops, I hit something there. What? Mr. Justice, show us the spot! The witness actually reviewed the location, viewed the stand from this point. And, in all actuality, it can't be anywhere here. It can't be here, whatever he says, uh, where he was standing. However, if he was standing, like, around here, here, whatever, then he could clearly see it, so right about here. The witness was standing here, on the opposite side. Because on the opposite side, it says Noodle. How do you know that? When viewed from the south, the sign of the stand reads El Dunes, as we know. However, Observe the other side of the stand. Oh, the sign says Noodle! Exactly! The name of the stand is split between the front and back signs. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court! You witnessed the crime from the northern side of the park and not the south! Yo! You got me! So what? So what? What does that matter if you saw the killing from the north or south side? It makes no difference at all! He's right! Travel far enough to the south and you will end up going north! Viewing that global school directions are early without meaning! Actually, maybe he's right. What does it change? It changes everything, Apollo! Chusi? Remember his testimony from before? Though, to be honest, I'm a little scared of where this is leading. Now, you guys should understand where, where this is coming from as well. The killer and the victim are facing each other here. Then at the moment the killer raises his weapon, Mr. Sickler shouts. And when he shouts, at which point the victim turns his way to look. And the killer fires his pistol. And that enters the right temple. Get it? Now, if he wasn't standing there, then wait a minute. That's why the bullet hit him in the right temple. No contradictions, right? Right. But if Mr. Stickler was standing on the north side of the park, that reverses the whole scenario! Yep. Completely. If Mr. Stickler shots from where he is now, and the victim looks in his direction... Yep, see? Perfect. It completely contradicts what people kept saying. The bullet would have to hit his left temple. Ah, ah! In other words, someone standing at at point K couldn't shoot the victim in his right temple. It's impossible. 
That's right! So now that we know that Mr. Sickle is standing on the northern side, the wound location takes up and takes on an entirely different meaning. Indeed. You are absolutely correct, Fraulein. What meaning? The entry wound on the right side of the victim's head, correct? While the right side of the victim's head is north. North? Duh! But that's where the witness was the sticker was standing. Correct. So if he was standing to the north, then the only person here who could have shot the victim in the right temple was Mr. Stickler himself! No! Really? Are we really going for this? Alright, I'll take it. Order! 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 Wow. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. No, it didn't. She should quit being a magician and take on her father's role of being a freaking defense attorney. She just flipped this whole case on its head while I was still figuring it out! Turnabout! Oh, it looks like he's a little mad there. Clarify one point for me if you would, Air Forehead. What now? Are you truly accusing this college student of murder? Well, I can't say he exactly looks innocent, but something still doesn't feel right. I just can't picture him as a, a real killer. No, please, looks aside, I'm really a nice guy. All my friends say so. You have friends? No, oh, that's, that's rude. Let's hear what the defense has to say. What are you going to do now, Justice? Should I really accuse Mr. Stickler? No... See, he's not really guilty, but I don't think he would be for murder. However, if you put two and two, to two and two together, and you're wondering why that cell phone might be under the car, then we could accuse him of another crime. I think you know what, what it is. I don't think Wesley Stickler is a killer, but he's not innocent either. His unusual silence tells me that much. Mr. Stickler, you seem unusually quiet. Tell us why, now! The word confession is in my dictionary! Air forehead. I'm afraid it falls to you to el elucidate Air Stickler's silence. Elucidate? I don't know what I said. Mr. Justice, you did say you were accusing witness just now for a crime other than murder. Your reason? Of course, all ears. Yeah, I know he's guilty of something, but what crime other than murder is there? Do I have evidence that shows his involvement in some other crime? Your evidence? The court's all eyes, Mr. Justice. Show us evidence that points to witness's involvement to a crime. Now, this might be a little weird, but we, we, we're going to be whooping up the panties. The evidence is this! What is that? Woman's underwear? Hey, those are mine! I wonder what's going on here. Seems like he's nonchalant about it. Apparently. What? Don't look at me like that! Wait a minute. Order! 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 Mr. Stickler! While I can't say this comes as a shock, it's not what it seems! By Perel Gorilla's what? I didn't get, get to read that. Something Gorilla, that's what it looked like. <laughs> On the night of the murder, just past 9 p.m., a young girl catches a panty snatcher red handed. Bravely, she gives chase, but the snatcher flees and hides himself in no other place than the Miraculous Clinic garage. Aha! Uh -huh. Incidentally. Get it? These panties were found in the exhaust pipe of the car there. Presumably, he was trying to hide the evidence of his crime. Ergo, while you may not be a murderer, you are guilty of panty snatching in the first degree! Pervert! Please, hear me out! It's not like it seems! Uh, nah, you're just a freaking pervert! Order! 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 Mr. Stickler! You should be ashamed! It's not what she... It... Seems uh, Wow. Well then. So are we to understand you were silent not because you were guilty of murder, but because you lacked the courage to admit your theft of this girl's undergarments? <clears throat> Perhaps you were not aware of my school's name was originally written I V. I stands for intelligence and V sounds of valiance. See your point. I'm not done! Now I'm a major in the science department! And what does science teach if not curiosity? Yes, 
We of the IVU Science Department are valiant, curi valiantly curious. No challenge is too daunting, and whether greater challenges to science than a mystery. Come on, you're talking about girls' panties here. No, you do not understand. A mystery is the unknown, and the unknown is unacceptable. There are known knowns and unknown un unknowns. How the hell they go? There are known knowns and known unknown. No, no, damn it. I messed it up. I'm sorry. I tried being cool. And my friends, when it comes to mysteries, those panties are a promised land. From the moment I first laid my eyes on them, I was compelled to investigate for science. Yeah, okay, for science, pervert. A full-size car tire was only the first mystery those panties revealed. A tire? Yes, I saw her do it. She pulled the tire out of those panties. But that's not all. First, there was a tire, then a stew pot, then a frozen chicken. One mystery after another, it was... It was magic! Oh, I remember now. He's one of the regulars in the audience at the Wonder Bar. Huh? He's talking about my magic panties trick. Oh... I just don't understand. A broom from a pair of panties? It mocks the very laws of physics. A broom? And a frozen turkey chicken trucy? Whatever happened to doves and bunny rabbits? Mr. Stickler! You stole this girl's panties to understand a magic trick? You say panties, but they are so much more than that. For me, they're an object for serious study. I wonder. There have been a recent rash of panty snatchings in the area. Were they all you? I I'm sorry, but I did it for science! Every time I spy in a pair of panties flapping the breeze, I just took them out or something like that. Man, oh, damn, he's reading too fast again. I don't feel like reading it. He wept tears of joy from taking panties? Yet, yeah, woe was I. For once again, the lacy heart pan truth slipped through my fingers. Blah, blah, blah. Pervert. Still, that leaves one thing unexplained. Ah, you refer to our witness's other lie, yes? The witness claimed he saw a crime from the south, but was in fact in the north. Indeed. Would anyone care to explain why he lied about that? Be my guest, Air Forehead. Me? Did I not hear you correctly? Did you not say you do not accuse a witness of murder? Why, then, did the witness lie about his location at the time of the shooting? Or have you have no idea? Apollo, there's something about the, very, the way the diagram is arranged right now. When you think about it, right near where Mr. Sickler was standing, isn't there a... Well, Mr. Justice, what say you? Do you have any evidence to show us why, why the witness fled, lied about his location? Now, if you look at, uh, let's look at the map. Actually, is there another diagram here? Shoot, do they not have... They don't have a map. Oh, wait, do it. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Ah, they don't have a diagram on people park? Uh, I guess it's not too necessary, I guess. But if you notice, there was something right next to Mr. Stickler where he, he'll be standing now, which would be these. The evidence that shows why he lied is this. What? More panties? How many panties are you carrying in your pocket there for, Ed? Those are the last, honest. Look, these were found in a trash can at the park. Looking at the diagram, we can see that the trash can was right next to where the witness stood. Mr. Sickler, you didn't. Alas, I'm a failure as a scientist. I can't unravel the mysteries of the universe. I can't even unravel a pair of panties. So, these panties are your handiwork as well. That night, I had been chased out into the miraculous garage, miraculous clinic garage. Weeping frustration, I was forced to abandon my prize. Wouldn't you see how I felt? Don't you see how I felt? Believe me, I'd rather not. I hid in the garage for a short while, then abandoning the panties I made for home. To avoid the office where the girl works, I went towards the south entrance. Okay. When I saw them hanging there on the clothesline of my giant mansion. A giant pair of panties! Apparently he didn't know those blues belonged to the mob. I had them safe in my pocket, ready to take home. I stumbled upon a murder. The murder of Dr. Maractus. I reported what I had seen, but as I waited for the police to arrive, I got scared. What if they searched me? That's when you disposed of the bloomers? 
Yes, it was a severe blow of the progress of science, but one that had to be born. A fascinating, if disturbing tale. Very disturbing tale. I believe this brings today's proceedings to a close. I'm more than pleased to dismiss this witness for the remainder of the trial. One last thing, if I might. Yes, Prosecutor Gaben. Regardless of where we ended today, some vital points, vital points were made. Namely, the defendant Waki Kitaki was at the scene of the crime, and he was pointing a weapon at the victim. One more thing. Waki Kitaki has a clear motive. Indeed. Defendant Waki Kitaki is still the prime suspect in this case. The only suspect, in fact. Assuming there was no one else that had seen him at the time. Yet a mystery remains. The location of Wu in the victim's right temple has yet to be explained. The court requests further investigation on both the defense and prosecution. Yeah, baby. No problem. Very well. This brings up trial for today to the close. Court is adjourned. And just like that, we got off pretty lucky there. So we just found out Mr. Sickler was just a freaking pervert, like I've been saying. So, my god, this video went on for way too long. I'm thinking about splitting it, but if not, then screw it. I mean, you guys can just take a break from watching it, I guess, but whatever. So next time, we're going to continue on with our investigation and maybe find out more about, uh, I don't know exactly what the hell's going on. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Ace, uh, Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. I'll see you guys later.